film I chose was Bohemian Rhapsody. It's a music film and a biopic. It was released on October 23rd, 2018. The film company was 20th Century Fox. The producers were Graham King and Jim Beach. The director was Brian Singer. The screenplay writer was Anthony McCartan. The cinematographer was Newton Thomas Siegel. And the primary actors were Rami Malek, Lucy Boynton, Willem Lee, and Ben Hardy. It cost $52 million to produce the film and it has generated $903 million since. The film's main characters are Freddie Mercury, Mary Austin, Brian May, and Roger Taylor. The setting of the film is mainly London, England from 1970 to 1985. And to summarize the plot, this is the story of Freddie Mercury, lead singer of the legendary rock band Queen, leading up to the band's famous performance at Live Aid. The film's primary theme has to do with defying stereotypes, breaking conventions, and turning differences into strengths. Freddie Mercury, by all means, had all the cards stacked against him as a gay man of color in the 70s and 80s. Nonetheless, he became a timeless rock legend through his legendary vocals, androgynous style, and larger-than-life personality. To quote Freddie in the film, We're four misfits who don't belong together. We're playing for the other misfits. They're the outcasts right at the back of the room. We're pretty sure they don't belong either. We belong to them. Through embracing his eccentricity, he became a symbol of hope for outcasts everywhere. For symbols, Freddie's teeth are a symbol for the ignorance of the people around him and all the assumptions people make about him. When Freddie first meets Brian May and Roger Taylor, he suggests they let him be the new lead singer for their band Smile. They shut him down because of his teeth, and he sings one of their songs to prove that what they perceived to be a weakness of him was actually a great strength. He had four additional incisors in his mouth, and more room meant more range. Freddie defies stereotypes about his race and his sexuality throughout the film, further building upon this theme. To characterize the dialogue, the dialogue is comparable with the projected characters. English characters speak with English accents, and the speech is accurate to the dialect of 70s and 80s England. Freddie's accent in the film is accurate to the real Freddie Mercury. For sets, costumes, and makeup, the creators of the film were extremely dedicated to making sure the sets, costumes, and makeup were accurate to the real places and styles related to Queen. One important scene of the film features an exact set replica of Wembley Stadium, where Queen performed for Live Aid. This replica helps the audience truly feel as though they are watching the real Live Aid performance. Clothing worn in the film is accurate to the 70s and 80s. For example, velvets, silks, flared trousers, and geometric patterns are commonly worn in the film. Rami Malek wears exact recreations of Freddie's stage looks, and he frequents very flamboyant clothing to highlight Freddie's androgyny and his naturally flamboyant personality. Every person in the crowd during the Live Aid scene wears accurate 80s clothing to keep the scene accurate to the time period of the real event and fully immerse the audience in the atmosphere of that time. Makeup and prosthetics were used to alter Rami Malek's eye spacing, nose, and teeth to make him look more like Freddie Mercury. For camera shots, an aerial shot is used over the crowd at the beginning of the Live Aid scene to show how large the crowd was and build anticipation for the upcoming performance. A close-up shot on Freddie's face is used as he starts singing to show the change in his energy as he finally feels in his element again. The shot reminds the audience of all he's been through in the past year and all he is currently struggling with, his AIDS diagnosis. He uses these struggles to motivate himself and give the most iconic Queen performance the world has ever seen. And this close-up shot shows the exact moment where something changes in his eyes and the performance comes alive. For sound effects and music, since this film follows Queen and Freddie Mercury's life after he joins the band, the film relies heavily on music to help tell the stories. The band is often seen in the process of songwriting and recording to give the audience an inside look of the characters and of the songs. Songs are played at the time they were released and in correlation with the events taking place between the main characters. For example, Fat Bottom Girls is played during the scene where they're going on their first tour of America. This scene perfectly shows their rise in fame through showing their performances of the same song across the country. Freddie Mercury's, Mark Martell's, and Rami Malek's vocals were all mixed together in scenes where Freddie is singing to make Rami's performance look more authentic to the audience. The production knew they could not pull off a Queen movie without Freddie Mercury, so his iconic vocals make this film far more realistic and ear-catching. The music brings the excitement that comes with fame to every scene it's featured in, perfectly narrates the events taking place, and encapsulates the way Queen's music was an infectious force of nature to all audiences. For lighting and use of graphics, at the start of the film, during the early 1970s, things are seen in golds and pastels and warm tones, the overall tone hazy and nostalgic to reflect the 70s. As time progresses to the late 70s and early 80s, the colors are more desaturated and cool, the lens is sharper and the picture more detailed. 
In the scene where Freddy tells Paul Prenter to get out of his life, the lighting is very dark and the tone serious. This is a pivotal scene in the film that motivates Freddy to do live aid and turn his life back around, and the lighting tells the audience that this scene is important. For my added information of interest, Rami Malek worked painstakingly with a movement coach to perfect every nuance of Freddie Mercury's mannerisms. Every eye glance, every body turn, every cocky strut on stage, and every flick of the microphone had to be just right. And the cat person that Freddie Mercury is portrayed to be in the film is very close to reality. Friends of his have stated that he would often call home from tour asking to talk to the cats, and he would make sure the TV was turned on if there was a performance that he did broadcasted live on TV so the cats could watch. And no member of Queen has ever definitively explained the meaning behind the lyrics of the song Bohemian Rhapsody. And the clip I chose to show was the scene where Freddie does the infamous call in response with the crowd at Live Aid. I chose this clip because it feels like Freddie's whole life has been leading up to this exact moment. Through all he's been through up to this point, through all he's been through in the past year, he's finally made it. He knows he's dying, but for now he's more alive than ever as he stands in front of tens of thousands of people and sings those notes with everything he has. The entire Live Aid scene is scarily accurate to the real events, so it was just so impressive and chill-inducing to watch Rami Malek give such a convincing performance as Freddie. Thank you.